1061 KISS FM, all the hits. Ryan O'Brien here with a couple of uh, special guests in the studio. You can see them Sundays on AMC as part of the show Comic Book Men. We've got Min Ching and Mike Zapsik. Did Zapsik, I pro- great. Did Nicely I pronounce that correctly? Done. Awesome. We're off amazed. to a rousing start here. You, you uh, messed up Ming's name, but that's all right. <laughs> How did I mess up? Did I mess Ming, up Ming Chen, but it it's doesn't Ming matter. Ming Chen, I'm sorry. Or, or, or Mang Chen. <laughs> it's okay. Perfect. You guys are at PopCon this weekend, which is going on today until 8, and then tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the National Guard Armory off the Lloyd Expressway here in Evansville. And we'll get into what you guys are going to be involved with as far as PopCon goes to begin uh, here in just a minute. But I wanted to start with, uh, you guys are on this show, and the show is what, in its fifth season now? We're in our fifth season. We just uh, we just wrapped uh, our season on Sunday, this past Sunday. So we are now on um, on hiatus until, we, until they uh, green light us for season so six. So you were not sure yet if there will be a season six then? Uh, no, we're not. But you know what? Um, I'm putting it in uh, the universe. You feel hands. pretty comfortable? Yeah. yeah. Can, well, I assume, you know, for people that maybe aren't familiar with the show on demand, is it is it now Netflix? Can we are on, we've got one season on Netflix. Okay. Yeah, it's on, on demand, uh, iTunes, Amazon, uh, pretty much anywhere you can, you can really you can download. Find. download. We don't care. <laughs> just get it. How you get it. More, exactly. Just get it. Well, the, the, the story you work at and where the show originates from is Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash. Yes. Uh, which is owned by Kevin Smith, director, actor, uh, comic book uh, aficionado, if you will. And, and Ming, I know you've been with the not just the the store but you and kevin have worked together for a long time tell yeah, us how uh, you got uh, involved tw- uh, about 20 years uh, i back uh, in 1994 when the movie his first movie clerks came out i made a fan website and he found it and just called me and I've, That's been, cool. I've been working with them ever since. Uh, never thought it would lead to reality TV <laughs> or anything that's come. It's not reality. It's unscripted. <laughs> there there we go. Just never thought it would lead to TV, but it did. I'm so. glad they finally realized that it's got to have a different name. Yeah. It's not. I mean, it's real. You guys are real people. Yeah. We are real. We uh, talk once real. Once you put uh, cameras anywhere, it changes everything. Yeah. So it's not reality TV anymore. It's it's unscripted. They throw us in, in unique situations and... It's it's sort of like trying to fight your way out of a paper bag, yeah, and hilarity ensues. And hilarity, yeah, but it's ensues. led to cool things. Uh, and now here sure. we are at Evansville at PopCon. I yeah, mean, absolutely, that's pretty awesome. Now, Mike, you've been with the uh, with the store since two thousand. How right. did you uh, get involved? Uh, I was actually a uh, a customer before I was an employee. Mm-hmm. I I didn't annoy Walt Flanagan. And or I didn't annoy him enough that he he couldn't stand me. <laughs> it's right. a key he, quality, which is and it's a very unique quality because uh-huh. everybody annoys Walt. <laughs> and um, he needed somebody to work two days out of the month, every other Saturday. And I said, absolutely, I'd love sure. to work. You know, every kid's dream is to to work in a comic book store. And somehow I parlayed that into a full time gig. Right. I was going back to college because I, I had a a, um, a career as a chef. Really? And, yeah, I was a chef for 12 years, and wow. I, I uh, hit burnout. Like a polar opposite kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. And, um, you know, one thing led to another, and, and here, here I am on, you know, this many years later on you're, TV. You're too modest. You're <laughs> on the show, and, and in real life, you're the comic book genius. You are you are the encyclopedia it's, of it, comic Well, it's books. just one of those things where, you know, you go to a cocktail party, and, and people start talking about stuff. Yeah. Comic books almost never come up. Right. So, you know, I've got all this specialized knowledge that never had an outlet. But let me ask you this, because, you know, and you've been into comic books as since, like you said, as uh, since you were a kid, when comic books were kind of a nerdy thing at that time. Right. And now you fast forward to now and there's the Marvel Cinematic Universe and DC and all this stuff. And it's almost it's become far more mainstream. So I would imagine that you probably do get those kind of conversations brought up at dinner now parties now, do. don't you? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I put it to you this way. Uh, back in the 60s, it was counterculture. Mm-hmm. Then it became pop culture. And now it's actually just culture. Yeah, this is our culture. Yeah. Yeah, you're the man now. You're the he's a guy at the cocktail parts with his pinky. I was like, ha have you heard? I'm the most interesting man in the world, yeah, which is you... really depressing for everybody else. Hello, Muffy, have you heard of the Civil War? Oh, yeah, the cinematic Civil uh, War. masterpiece coming out. Uh, whose side are you on, Spider Man? I'm really Iron hoping man. for that Planet Holt movie uh, yes. to come out. Oh yeah. So Ming, let me ask you. Yes. Um, you're a tech guy. I know you do a lot with websites. Like Absolutely. you said, that's how you and Kevin first met. What? for lack of a better term, drew you into comics to begin with? Uh, it was a, I got my first comic when I was six years old. Uh, a kid gave me a copy of Avengers 214. On the cover was uh, 
picture of Iron Man being taken down by the Ghost Rider, and mm-hmm. I saw that. I'm like, what? What is it? My mind was blown as sure. a six year old, and I've continued ever since then. Uh, when I got into college, the story became a lot more adult. Uh, the um, there was Spawn, mm-hmm. Preacher, things mm-hmm. like that, and that got me. That got me way back into comics, and and uh, that that darker tone uh, kind of keeps me keeps me going. Uh, and let's and, not forget, you oh. know, the the swimsuits, the tight fitting clothes well, on yes, the ladies. Doesn't hurt. Sure. Yeah. Shin thirteen. Uh-huh. You know? Sure. The the proportions. Yes. Uh, that 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 didn't hurt either. <laughs> But let, let me ask you this, Mike. And again, we got Mike Zapsik and Ming Chen from uh, Comic Book Men. They'll be at PopCon this weekend joining us here in studio. I didn't read comics growing up. I enjoy sci-fi and I enjoy those kind of characters. What I gathered from origin stories and that kind of stuff were from the after school cartoons and the Saturday morning cartoons right. that were based off the off the written material. Let's say somebody like me who has seen all the Marvel movies and they we watch the DC movies and you know the stuff that's on TV, Arrow and Flash and all that stuff. If you wanted to get into comic books, to me it's because I look at comic books and go, there are thousands upon thousands, <laughs> and there's origin stories, and things have been blown up and re-origined, and exactly. all this other stuff. Where, where, is a, where do you start uh, if you wanted I'll, to get into comic books? Always start at the beginning. That's my my opinion. You know, you and find what you like. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a comic book out there for every human being on the planet. I don't care who you are. Ming mentioned a couple. Preacher, if you are down on religion or <laughs> even up on religion, mm-hmm. and you don't mind the little vampires in your uh, you know creation. Asianism, go and read Preacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's Why the Last Man. There, there are, are these adult books mm-hmm. that have, um, and, and comics aren't just for kids anymore. I wish there were some more comics for kids because mm-hmm. you know we we've got to you know get the kids in and and make yeah. them feel welcome too. Exactly. But I mean, right now, Why the Last Man, uh, Preacher. I, I can go on. There's uh, yeah, Swamp Walking thing. Dead, uh, obviously. Uh, Swamp obviously, thing. The Walking sure. Dead. You yeah. know, start and. Um, we, we are at the point where we are reprinting everything. So everything that you have ever heard of is accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm for somebody who doesn't really like or understand the superhero genre, but you want to get into it a little bit, right? Try kingdom come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. It's amazing. And the, the artwork alone is, is worth the price of the book. Everything in trade paperback is, you know, it, it's out there. Yeah. You can go to a Barnes and Noble and find this stuff. Yeah, they're all collected now. Let's say you saw Deadpool or <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. You can get the collected editions where I'm they start sure. right at the very beginning. You'll spend maybe 30 bucks and get, uh, you'll get a good, you know, you'll get, you'll get like you'll 20 get like, issues in one yeah, shot. 15 issues, 20 issues. Uh, Deadpool classics, you know, will start you off at, you know, New Mutants 98, where he first appeared, and then mm-hmm. it'll go into like his first miniseries. Well, you guys mentioned the artwork, and I remember watching it. was It was re-aired earlier or late last year on, on PBS, and it was kind of this uh, documentary about the evolution of superheroes right. and yeah. comic books, and Stan Lee was in it and all these other uh, people that kind of were the ones that started this whole the genre. Luminaries. You look at those comics that were first published in the 1920s, the 30s, 40s, 50s, the artwork there, which I'm sure was pretty advanced for its time, mm-hmm. compared to what you get now, some of this stuff is just the shading and the lighting and what people can do with oh, this absolutely. stuff blows my mind that but, people are that talented. Yeah, here's a, a little known fact. Back in the, the 30s and 40s, most of the men went off to war, so comic books were actually made by kids. Right. So you've got 16, 17-year-olds who are mm-hmm. drawing comics, earning a, you know, a, a daily wage as a man and putting these books out. Right. So it, it's actually kind of interesting if you delve back into like the history of comics. Let me ask you this, and either one of you or both of you can, can answer. Why can't DC get a movie right? <laughs> what, why, why can't they figure out and Marvel... Marvel has. Marvel has the, had the formula like right off the get-go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marvel, they, they came after DC... Uh, DC Comics has been around since Superman. They're, they're like right. the originators. But Marvel Marvel got it right uh, back in the 60s. They have uh, heroes who are flawed, heroes who, you know, made mistakes and who owned up to them, uh, heroes who had trouble, you know, paying their rent. Mm-hmm. So um, I think they had a leg up on that, whereas you have Superman and Batman. Batman is a multi-billionaire. Yeah, right. And never has to worry about anything. Uh, Superman is like the perfect guy. Can't right. do anything wrong. Indestructible. Yeah. yeah. 
So he doesn't have to worry about, you know, taking a bullet to the face. Right. Because I really had high hopes for Batman versus Superman. And I knew I, I had seen the headlines. Critics mm -hmm. weren't liking it. Fans that had early access to screenings weren't liking it. Uh, Gavin, who I think you guys met last night, yes, I right. believe. Uh, big comic book guy. has read mm -hmm. comic books his whole life. He really shot it down. And I kind of thought... Well, maybe he's just nitpicking it a little bit more mm -hmm. than I would because he's so familiar with the the source material. But I sat there and I had so many high hopes and it just was, this is not a good movie. It's just not a good movie. And I, I can't figure out why they can't get this straight. I actually think that Affleck did a great job as Bruce I, Wayne. I don't have a problem with the acting. Uh -huh. I think the story was poorly told. Uh, the, uh, it had more plot holes. Mm -hmm. than, yeah, you're absolutely right. You could drive. You know the Batmobile. For through. somebody like like myself who is not super familiar with the source material, this the the dream sequences and the guy that I guess was the Flash entering this time thing. Yeah, he and traveled just, I'm, time. I'm sitting there in the theater going, I have what is happening yeah. right now? I have no clue. To be honest, there is no source material for this. I mean, they they took a little bit from Dark Knight Returns. They mm -hmm. took a little bit from uh, Superman: The Death of. Right. Uh, but there was no real source material, mm -hmm. so you shouldn't have felt that confused. <laughs> <laughs> but you did but anyway. I did. Everyone did. Right. I, I actually liked certain parts of the movie, mm -hmm. but overall, you know, it it was that it it had such potential mm -hmm. and it should have been the perfect movie, and yet it wasn't. And just wasn't good. My favorite part was Gal Gadot when Doom yeah, Absolutely. And this is a spoiler, folks. When Doomsday punches her and like she goes flying backwards and she shakes it off and she wipes like the blood away from her mouth and she smiles like it's on. <laughs> yeah, that like, that's when I was like a great scene. This is fantastic. And I have high hopes for the Wonder Woman woman movie because I'm a huge fan of the period piece. Mm -hmm. Like the Captain America first right. Avenger. Mm -hmm. Just about the most perfect movie you'll ever see. You know, as far as comic book movies go. Right. And then uh, they topped it. The Russo brothers topped it with uh, Cap um, Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And now they're doing Civil War. I I am going to be blown away. I know. Why Why doesn't DC get it right? Because DC, they, um, they, they tend to compartmentalize. Mm-hmm. They've got their cartoon universe, they've got their TV universe, and then they've got their cinematic universe. The dude who played The Flash, uh, Ezra Miller, yes. is that his name? Mm -hmm. Not the I, same guy from the show. No, right. not Grant Gustin yeah. is The Flash He's to me. great. I love that he show. He's fantastic. Why not bring him I, in? I, that's what I don't get either. Well, and it's... Well, we have to do separate contracts and blah, blah, blah. It's like, Who cares? All right, you know what? Then do it. Then, yeah. then you know what? <laughs> Chop that legalese stuff off at the knees... I don't want to hear about, you yeah. know, if a lawyer is making the decisions for the cinematic universe, fire that lawyer. Right. And I've seen the theory that they may try to, because there's all these multi-universes in DC Comics and stuff, that they may try to pitch it as some kind of, well, that's the Flash of this timeline, uh, and the TV no. Flash, don't, the, no, You're, you're just going to confuse people, no. yes, exactly. and, and you know what, people are stupid. Yeah. Keep Dream it simple. That's right. Keep Dream it simple. Line. That's exactly right. Keep it simple, stupid. So, mm, yeah. Uh, Ming Chen, Mike Zapsik from Comic Book Men on AMC Sunday nights. They'll be at PopCon this weekend. Uh, I saw, by the way, Ming, that you guys uh, checked out a, a relatively new place here in town secret headquarters yes, yesterday absolutely. You, and you seem to enjoy what you saw well, we loved it It was a little slice of uh jen san bob secret yeah. stash here in yeah. evansville uh uh yeah i, I mean our, our, they did a great job with it we stepped in and uh if we lived here i'd be hanging out there all the time <laughs> for true. sure you would never be, get rid of them it would be my secret headquarters <laughs> yes <laughs> when Chen's secret power is <laughs> the ability to not leave secret headquarters yeah we had actually met the uh, the owner uh, jeffrey osborne at uh, at another con and um he mentioned now oh, i'm thinking about opening a store yeah uh, what would you name it i'm like ah however you, i would name it if i had a store i'd name it secret headquarters so you're the guy behind the name yeah yeah, yeah without which knowing weird. it until yeah, you was, showed up yeah i was yeah. kidding around but he was like wait till you see the name of this place i was like oh <laughs> wow you really did it but it, it is a great place if you love pop culture you love star wars you love funko pop figures yeah you love video games oh. yeah they've got i know they've got a bunch of old school systems nintendo nes yeah. sega yeah. genesis sega master system which i grew up on uh so so much cool stuff over yeah, there. Toys, it, it, is a, it is a pure geek heaven. Yeah. So he's done a great job. PopCon today from, uh, well, about now till 8 o'clock and then tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 6. Are you guys just available the whole time or yeah. what's the plan for PopCon We're tomorrow? We're doing a uh, panel over the tomorrow. Weekend? Uh, doing a panel. It's, uh, you know, ask us anything yep. kind of panel. That's what we like to do. Mm -hmm. um, 
no holds barred, don't bring the kitties, but you know, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. Bring, I'll, well, try, do, well, I'll do, try to do, go. Do bring the kitties. You've done a fine job here. You know? Oh, thank you. you I'll try to go kept PG your language. tomorrow, there too. There you go. Absolutely yeah. bring you the kitties. You can do it here. You can do it there. Uh, kids tend to are free, yeah, so how there's awesome no excuse that. not to bring your kids. And uh, yeah, we'll be available. Uh, I wasn't both. saying don't bring the kids. Don't bring the kids to the panel. No. <laughs> we'll keep it clean. I'll keep it clean. But like, come and meet us. Seriously, meet us. Ask us questions. Sure. We are, we... If you can't come to Jane Sound Bob's Secret Stash, that we have come to you. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you can catch uh, both Ming and Mike from Comic Book Men on AMC uh, today at PopCon. Tomorrow at PopCon, it's at the National Guard Armory. Tickets are available at the door. It benefits Riley Children's Hospital up in Indianapolis, so it's a great cause as well. Uh, pleasure meeting you guys. This was fun. I could talk for another 20 or 30 minutes, Pleasure's but we do ours. need to move on. So I gotcha. uh, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.